Welcome to the Chapel of St. Pope Carulus at St. Paul's Coptic Orthodox Church, Irvine. The icons here have been arranged to be consistent with the theme of the Body of Christ. The story begins in the east, on the eastern wall, showing us the Body of Christ in all its fulfilment, at the altar. This is the Divine Liturgy where Christ the High Priest offers himself as food, the tree and source of life, to the entire church to commune with him. In this heavenly scene, we not only see the disciples, but Saint Paul has also been added, as he is the saint of the parish, and Saint Pope Carulos is also there, to whom the chapel is dedicated. We then see the body of the Christ in the New Testament through the Nativity and the Resurrection. On the northern wall, the Virgin Mary is nursing her son and presents to us the body of Christ, God incarnate, in the flesh. She is surrounded by the angels as well as Saint Joseph and the Magi who are approaching to worship him. On the opposite side, on the southern wall, is the icon of the Resurrection. Here we see the body of Christ is missing only to reveal that he is not dead, but alive, and implying that we will become his body, him living in us. Here, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of God, go to the tomb, and on their way back, they meet Christ who declares to them to rejoice, and they bow down to worship him. The other part of the scene is the larger group of women bearing spices, again finding the stone rolled away, and this time the angel sitting on it, preaching the good news of the resurrection. Moving down the south wall, we have the body of Christ foreshadowed in the Old Testament. Towards the back we have what is known as a typology, which is a scene that foreshadows the reality. This is seen in the sacrifice of Isaac by Abraham, where Isaac returns alive as a type of the resurrection of Christ. On the other side, on the northern wall, Isaiah the prophet, pointing at the Virgin Mary in the Nativity, holding the prophecy that the Virgin will conceive and bear a son, Emmanuel, God with us. The body of Christ focuses on God's constant presence with us, his people. Here is a cherubim holding a burning coal under the throne of God, which he will place on Isaiah's mouth, according to the vision he had. This is symbolic of the Eucharist. Further down on both walls, we see the body of Christ as we know it today manifest in the saints. On the one side, the 21 martyrs of Libya. As this is only very recent, it shows the body of Christ is continuous and alive. Then we have Saint George, Saint Theodore, Saint Philopater Mercurius, and Saint Victor, generals in the army. On the other side are the ascetics, cross-bearers who didn't just die once like the martyrs, but went out into the desert to die to themselves daily. His resurrection transforms us as well, to defeat and continue to trample over death day by day, like the martyrs. The cherubim of Isaiah mentioned before also is taking Saint Macarius by the hand to the desert to go deeper in his communion and prayer. Then we have Saint Bishoy, Saint John the Short, Saint Paisa who was brought to repentance after a life of sin then two models of repentance, Saint Mary of Egypt and Saint Moses the Strong. After that we have Saint Marina the Monk, Saint Syncletica who was the first woman to go out into the Egyptian desert. Then we have Saint Anthony the Great, Saint Paul the Anchorite, Saint Pachomius and Saint John Cassian, a European monk who travelled to the Egyptian desert and documented the life of the monks there. Lastly is a newly canonised saint, Saint Justus of Saint Anthony's Monastery. The back western wall is dedicated to Saint Pope Carolus VI, 
which is fitting as his spiritual life was centred around the daily attendance of liturgy. Here we have two aspects of the body of Christ in St. Pope Carolus' life. The communal aspect, which is what we do together as one body, this is shown in the time period of him being a monk with his disciples, serving in the church of St. Mina in Old Cairo. The second is the private aspect, which still is connected to the entire body of Christ. When we stand individually, we are also in communion with the body of Christ. The angels and the saints are shown by St. Mina, standing behind St. Pope Carulus, praying in the wilderness, encouraging him. The top part of the western wall mirrors the image of the body of Christ on the eastern wall. The link represents Christ bringing us from every direction and uniting us to him, our centre. For example, the cross is presented as the tree of life, mirroring the tree of life in the image on the east, where we now celebrate liturgy under the tree. Whilst Adam and Eve were forbidden from eating of this tree, now, through the cross, we eat of it every time we participate in his body and blood. The angels are raising incense to the cross as a symbol of the resurrection, a shield of victory. The setting is in paradise. There are trees and birds, as well as wheat, which represents the body of Christ on the altar in the form of bread. There are two deer either side, which is not unusual. Animals either side of the cross is traditionally seen in monasteries. As King David says, as a deer pants for the waters, so my soul longs for you. Altogether, all the saints, the people of the Old and New Testament, are joined together and us with them to become the fullness of the communion of the body of Christ.